Sennheiser EWD digital wireless system claims to have highly linear components that don't create intermodulation products. So I've got RF Explorer running. I've got five body pack transmitters set to the first um, of the most open, actually this is a completely open frequency range for me. Um, so let's turn on the first one here. This one is 524-200. Let's see what happens. That's the first one. You need a couple of these on to start seeing intermod. Turn on the next one. Do you remember on the previous video the amount of bandwidth used by the GTDs? This is extremely narrow you can get a lot more channel density with this system. Well, so far I'm not seeing inter any intermodulation products, but we do only have two on. So let's turn on a few more. The third one. <laughs> okay. Let's set that down. Not sure why the RF output is so low on that one. tight. Let's turn on the fourth one. Wow. I think the claim is true. I don't see any intermod. Let's try the fifth one. So that claim is true. There's no intermod on these. Um, the next thing that's a little hard to understand with these units is how gain is done. There is no gain on the body pack transmitter or the handheld. The gain is actually in the receiver. So the way this works and I've had to comb the internet for this. I sent an email to Sennheiser and they basically said, you don't need to worry about gain, it just works. Well, we've all heard, all heard that before. Um, I did find a couple of articles where this guy here on Reddit is talking about how, um, well, this is on the EWDX, but they're pretty similar. When he exceeded the, <clears throat> the gain, he actually had dropouts, but they were audio dropouts. Once he called Sennheiser and they walked him through gain setting, problem went away. Um, this article or comment I found on a thread was the most uh, illuminating. So apparently inside each body pack, um, they take the audio in and they break it into um, an upper and lower dynamics so I think the total dynamic range of the transmitter is 134 dB. And that's what the um, Sennheiser support rep said. Oh, well, the 134 dB, you're never going to have a problem with gain. Well, um, the, so that's the analog to digital converter in the, in the transmitter. 
Um, so 267 dB uh, dynamic range uh, portions are, are sent. And then on the receiver, um, you know, so you still have the 134 dB dynamic range. Well, apparently the digital to analog converter only has a dynamic range of 110 dB. So what the gain is doing is fitting the signal into that um, limitation. So you want enough gain um, that you're above the minimum um, and you want to make sure you stay under the maximum or apparently the, the DAC will temporarily shut down to protect itself. Now the AF out level is, well, it's a couple of things. So in the analog cable between the receiver and your mixing console, you want to have a sufficient signal to noise ratio so that you're not sending out this mic level or lower signal from the wireless receiver and then jacking up the preamp gain on your mixer and picking up noise, although, you know, your cables should be good. Just not really good practice. Um, you also don't want to overload the, the preamp on the, well, what is probably for you a digital console, because uh, you've probably heard that digital clipping, and that's unpleasant. So you're going to have to decide if you want the sound to drop out, or if you want it to digitally clip when it's... So you could calibrate the gain so that... Um, when you're about to peak the 110 on the DAC, you're also peaking your mixing console's preamp gain. Or you could set one slightly lower and the other, or the other one slightly lower, so one of the other, uh, one, of the, one of the effects is happening first. You decide. Um, I think I'd probably rather have digital um, clipping rather than the sound dropping out completely. Um, and that also would give me a warning that I'm about to drop out. Now that, that really never should happen, right? Because during sound check, we're having the actors, you know, uh, give us a loud sound, the loudest sound they can make or might make during the show. And we're checking our, our meters and making sure that we're not peaking anywhere. And we're adjusting these devices accordingly to bring that down just under, but you don't want it to be too low or you could be below the, the digital detection threshold and you don't hear them at all. So um, that's my understanding of how gain works on this system. Now the EWDX adds a third setting called trim. And this seems, although also no one at Sennheiser answered my email, I asked them for an explanation on the difference between gain, AF out and trim and didn't get it. Um, my belief is that the trim is about multiple transmitters sharing the same frequency. Maybe you're switching instruments or you're switching vocalists and you want to sort of balance the levels between those different instruments or, or performers so that you don't have to keep tweaking the gain on your board or the gain on the receiver. Um, so it's like a little bit of an offset. I don't think it's a full gain adjustment. It's trim. Trim is usually not the full range. But overall, uh, a, a pretty impressive system, um, and there are no displays. You get really good battery life. Um, you use a little app on your phone to see what's going on with the unit. Probably still going to put a sticker on the side for the unit number. Um, in my area, I was able to get um, what looks like 30 channels out of the EWD. If I had the DX, I believe it'd be more. The it's a much broader spectrum, like it's R1 to 9. Um, but the EWDXs are a lot more expensive. And even more expensive if you get the Dante ones. And even more expensive if you get the quad receiver Dante. I found that just getting the, the, the two dual receivers, which have the same footprint as the quad Dante, was more economical, slightly more economical. But I'm not going to be getting those right now because I'm trying to... Um, sort of show off the EWD series, which is within 
the range of what many theaters can afford. 